whatever night it is, Wednesday, I guess, or we wouldn't be here. For those that don't know, Pastor Josh fell in his home Monday night and fractured his foot. The foot that he thought he had plantar fasciitis, but it turns out that it was fractured to start with, and he fractured it worse. It had started healing, and then he fractured it worse. So he's in a good bit of pain. He's in a boot, and uh, keep him in your prayers. Uh, tonight, we'll do our service like we normally do. And at this time, I would ask for any prayer request from the floor. And let's start over here on the right side first. Any prayer request? I'm having an endoscopy tomorrow at St. Francis in Greenville. Okay. Kathy? Luke Robinson. He's had his fourth ear infection, and uh, they said the next time it happens that they will have to do, they'll talk about tubes. So he has, you know, has the ear infection, antibiotics, and then it starts over again. So just pray for, he's 20 months old. So just. Okay. I don't know where she'll raise her hand or not, but Miss Ann sitting back here. She informed me this morning, or when she came in this evening, that she had been in the hospital with COVID and actually on a ventilator. And we just praise God that she's here with us tonight. Amen. Give her a mic, Terry. I give them all the glory because he, uh, they give me 20% chance of living. And, uh, I said, if I wasn't nothing but a prayer warrior, Amen. that's good enough for me Amen. just to be something. And so when I couldn't talk when they let me out, when they took me from the hospital to Cascades to recover, and I couldn't talk. But I got getting my voice back now, and, and I, I think sometimes that people wished I didn't get my voice back. <laughs> you got to make I, up for lost time, right? That's right. Amen. And... Uh, but I do, I give him all the glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Ann. Anybody else on the right side? Center section. Remember Sandra Patterson? She's my next door neighbor. She used to attend here. She's having a long back operation in the morning. Mm. So just remember her. Thank you, Dee. Speaking of neighbors in Lakewood Heights, where we live, we've had two senior citizen ladies pass away this week. Uh, both of them were, one was 85, the other one was 86. So... Pray for those families. Any other prayer requests? Raymond? I just want to thank you both for your prayers for me. Amen. Bless when the Lord's help, my heart's getting better. Good to have you, Raymond. You and Margie both. Missed you guys. Anybody else? Billy, would you open us in prayer, please? <clears throat>
I have the distinct pleasure this evening to introduce Dr. Robert Dickard. He won't recognize that name, but uh, I had the other privilege of working with him for many years at the association office, and not only has he a brother in Christ, but a dear friend of mine. And uh, I'm glad he's coming tonight to fill the spot of Pastor Josh. So keep Robert in your prayers as he comes. And Robert, you just come and share Jesus. Well, it's good to be here tonight. I'm thankful that I can be here. I'm sorry that's uh, in the injury and pain of your pastor, but I'm glad that I could be here. The last time, well, this past Saturday morning, I was speaking at a men's prayer breakfast, and I started, and uh, I looked at my watch, and I, I went on and on, and uh, my watch never did move, and I finally realized my watch had stopped. I don't know how long I went, but I finally said to the folks, I said, oh, I'm sorry, my watch has stopped, and about 10 people offered me their watch to, to help me with that. So, uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Randy asked that I have it fixed. <laughs> Well, it's good to be here tonight. Thank you for being here on a wintry, uh, well, not wintry, I guess, a, a spring, but a cool and rainy night. And uh, I'm thankful that God has given us a warm and safe and dry place to worship. If you have your Bibles, please turn to the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6. The days of Jeremiah were interesting days. The country was falling apart. Israel had already gone into exile and captivity. Now Judah is surrounded by the Babylonians and they don't know what's going to happen. Jeremiah, the man of God, the prophet of God, had been given them the word of God and they rejected God's word. But it was dark and confusing days. Imagine yourself living in a country, Judah or the United States, where everything that you have trusted and held on to and had, uh, had, had confidence in begins to crumble and fall apart overnight or over a brief period of time, everything seems upside down. Everything had changed. There was no stability. There was no um, encouragement. And the folks were looking around saying, what has happened to our country? What has happened to our world? And they were saying, what am I to do? So Jeremiah responds in chapter 6. By the way, there's some great preaching passages through the book of Jeremiah. But in chapter 6, we'll read just three verses because of time. But I want to read verse 10 and then verse 16 and verse 17. Verse 10, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach, and they have no delight in it. Did you catch what God said to them about their day? The word of God is to them a reproach. Verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Now they're wondering, where will they find peace and help in this troubling time. And God said, go to seek the old paths and the old ways, and you'll find rest. And they said, no, nope, not going to do it. Verse 17. Also, I said, a watchman 
over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. So in these three verses, summarize the attitude of the people in that day. And there are three things in this passage that I'll just touch on very briefly. The Word, the Word of God. God gave them a word. God said to them, here's the word of the Lord. And they said the word of God is a reproach to us and we have no delight in it. So we're not going to listen to the word of God. We're offended at those old truths and we're offended at what God said. Kind of what they're saying. Well, in our day, there are folk who say they're offended at the word of God. When the truth of God's word is proclaimed, they get offended when the Bible says here is the way, and they say, we're not going to listen to the word of God. We're not going to listen to his word. And then he talked about not only the word, he talked about the way. He said three things there. He said um, to the people of that day, look at verse 16, three true, three things he said. Stand See and ask. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and you'll find rest. And they said, no, we're not going to walk in the ways of God. So we're not going to listen to his word. We're not going to walk his way. And then there was the third thing in verse 17. I set a watchman over you and told him to sound the trumpet. In verse 17, they said, we will not hearken. We're not going to listen to the warning. So they reject God's word. They reject his way. They reject God's witness. The trumpet was a call to alertness, a call to be on guard. It was a call and a warning that the enemy was at the gate, and they said, we're not going to listen to the witness. So where are we in 2021 in this country we love. Where are we as believers? Where are we as Christians? And we say we love the Lord and we say that we want to follow him, but Christianity in general and Baptist in particular, where are we in this day? We are pretty much where the people of Judah were in the days of Jeremiah. And three things they said, we were not going to listen to his word, we're not going to walk in his way, and we're not going to listen to his witness. The word of God is true. Now can I tell you something, get this straight, the word of God is true in every generation, in every situation. It doesn't matter if it's 1950 or if it's 2021. The Word of God is true in every situation. It is, not, uh, it is not dependent on the times. It doesn't get modern with the times. The Word of God is true no matter what the situation. But today we have an entire generation who say we're not going to listen to the Word of God. And they reject God's Word. And the sad truth is that not all, not all of those people are lost and outside and, and, and on their way to hell. Many of those folk who said we're not gonna, we will no longer listen to the word of God sit in pews in the church buildings. And they say we're not going to listen to the word of God. A church called me, one of our churches in the Piedmont Association, well, it was last year, and they said, we would like you to, I'm going to use this word, this is not their word, we want you to referee a church fight, <laughs> kind of what they were saying. And they said, here's this situation, and here's this situation, and, and here's what some people are saying, and here's what some are saying, and, and, and we want you to come and referee this, just to be, uh, you know, to be neutral in this. And I said, well, if I come, I can't be neutral. They said, why not? I said, well... If I come, I want to share with you the word of God. What does God say? See, it doesn't matter what this group says, and it doesn't matter what this group says. The only thing that really matters is what the word of God says. So I went to that church on a Wednesday night, 
and I'd heard both sides. And I said, but before you make a decision, can I just share with you what the Word of God said? And and so happened, not just so happened, God planned it that way. Some verses that God gave me that spoke directly to the situation they were facing. You know what they said? We're not going to listen to that. That's not what we want to do. We already made up our mind, we're going to do this and this and this. I said, no, you can do that. But you're going contrary to the word of God. Well, that's old-fashioned. It's not what we, it's not, the, it's not 2021. I said, no, it's not. It's older than that. <laughs> it's God's word. And then he says something about the old paths. I was talking to a group of our pastors this Tuesday, uh, last week, I, Randy, you were there at the luncheon anyway, but in the meeting uh, we had, we were talking about some things, and I'm going to share that with you in just a moment, and I said, just because something is old doesn't mean it's ineffective, and just because something is old doesn't mean there's something better, and the way forward out of the mess that we're in with COVID and all of that, the way forward might be by looking backwards a little bit. And I'm not talking about doing church the way we did in 1950. But I am talking about going back to some principles that were true. The principles of God's word and the principles of the way we're to walk don't change. And there are certain things of the standard that God has for every child of God that will never change. And you can decide and I can decide am I going to walk this way or not. God won't break your legs and drag you down that way if you don't want to go, but there are consequences for going the wrong way and going a different way. The old paths. Let me take just a moment and talk about the old paths. What are the old paths? Well, there's several of them, but the old path is people who are deeply, intentionally, passionately committed to prayer. Seeking God in prayer. And I'm not talking about now I lay me down to sleep or God bless this food. I'm talking about coming before God, confessing our sins, opening ourselves before, prostrating ourselves before Him, and say, Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Seeking God in, on an intimate level. The old paths begin with intensive prayer the old paths would involve loving folk loving folk doesn't mean I agree with your sin but means I'm going to love you because God loves you and Jesus died for you and loving people we love them uh, in, in response to that I had a guy in our community when I was growing up we'd invite him to church everybody invited him to church and he never would come and finally he ended up joining the Church of God. And so I asked him later, why did you end up joining the Church of God? You're just as Baptist as I am. How is it that you ended up in Church of God? He said, I'll tell you why. Because they love me into their church. I thought that was a pretty good answer. Loving people. I was preaching a revival in maybe Rockingham, North Carolina some years ago. It wasn't going very well, and so on Tuesday, the pastor invited me to lunch. He wanted to talk about it. He said, what do you think? I said, you want me to tell you what I really think? He said, yeah. I said, I don't think your people like each other. I'll go a step further. I don't think they love each other. This this group and that group, they don't smile. They don't shake hands. There's no fellowship. I don't think your people actually like each other. I don't think they really want to be a church. Well, that's not what he wanted to hear, but that's what I perceived. So when people come to East Side, is it obvious to them that you love them, that you care about them? Is it obvious to other folk in your congregation, in your fellowship, that you really love them? You probably grew up in a similar fashion as me. I didn't always like what my parents told me to do, but I never doubted they loved me. It was obvious they loved me, would lay down their life for me. The old paths involve intimate, intentional prayer. It involves loving one another. I could go on. It involves being in God's word on a daily basis. It means 
sharing your love for God with others who don't know him. But there's a third thing in this passage. So he talks about the word. He talks about the way we're to walk. Then he talks about the witness. God, is, God said, I put a watchman up there to sound the trumpet, to give you warning there's danger. And you said, we're not going to listen. We're not going to listen. There are faithful men of God who stand in the pulpit week after week and preach, thus saith the Lord. And the people said, I'm not listening to that. Or if you tell somebody what God says, you try to lead them in that direction, they get upset with you. They get upset, they get upset with your church. If you take a stand, a biblical stand, there will be folks who get upset with you about that. And they won't listen to the warning that there's danger ahead. When you tell folk uh, that there's danger living outside the will of God, and you tell them that in love, they're focused saying, I'm offended by all that. We live in a whole generation of snowflakes. They just can't stand up to anything anymore, it seems like. And now we're talking about, you know, pout room. College students now have a little pout room they go to. Can you imagine? I mean, like kindergarten, I don't know. It's just. He said, they said, we're not going to listen to the warning. We're not going to listen to the watchman. So what, what does that say? And my watch has to stop, Randy. It's still working. In the. Piedmont Association, I'm going to talk about this the next time I'm here. In the Piedmont Association, we're going to do things this year and next year, a two-year project that I'm calling the comeback. Calling our church back, the churches of the PBA, to, back to three things, to back to the Lord, calling folks back to church, and calling the church back to evangelism. There are folks outside the will of God, and we just need to say to them, it's time that you come back to the Father. The prodigal son came to his senses, came back home, and his father met him with open arms. When folk return from their sin in repentance, the Heavenly Father will meet them with open arms. Embrace them. It's time that we call our people back to church. Now, folk, I've had COVID. It's not a play thing. It is real. But I'm telling you, it is time the people of God come back to worship God in person, in the building, because nothing can take the place of worship with one another in the building in the house of God. Amen. I'm thankful that we had technology and Zoom and Facebook and all. I'm thankful for the technology that allows us to do that stuff when we couldn't meet. But that day is coming to an end. It's time that we come back to church. When we come back to the Lord. It's time we come back to the church. So in the Piedmont Association, we're going to do a strategy for the next two years on how the churches can call their people back to worship. Most of our churches are averaging about 50% of what they did this time last year. The numbers are, have dropped about 50%. So you need to be in church, but your pastor needs you in church. Philip, my pastor came by two weeks ago, closed my door, sat down, and almost in tears, he said, you know, I'm so discouraged. He said, if I were old enough, I'd retire. I feel like I'm failing my church. I'm failing my Lord. Numbers are down. And he was so discouraged. Listen, your pastor needs you to be in your place. It's discouraging to him, and not just your pastor, other churches, when the pews are empty, and they could be. It's time we call our people back to church. And you know the generation that's missing, that not, has not come back to church right now? It's the 30-something and the 40-somethings. 20-somethings, something, they're coming back a little bit. The older folk, like myself, man, they're, they're kicking the doors in to come back. But it's 30-something years old and the 40-something years old. Uh, they've got used to sitting on their couch in their pajamas, drinking their coffee, and watching the church service, and they're not back. The third thing, we need to call our churches back to evangelism. The Great Commission has not been revoked because of COVID. Amen. So it's time that we call our churches back to having an intentional witness for the Lord. And we're going to help our churches, those who will let us, develop a prayer ministry and share and, and train them how they can be a witness uh, and the reason folks don't witness on a regular basis, and I'm not necessarily talking, knocking on doors like we did 30 years ago or 20 years ago, but other ways you can share your faith. 
I want to help our churches discover ways that they can train their people in personal evangelism. And I'll finish with just one little illustration, one little story. A few years ago, well, it's when I was a DOM over in Chesterfield, so it's been more than just a few. It's probably been 10 years ago. Uh, an evangelist, and I, I've known Frank, Frank Shiver. Some of you might know Frank, but I've known Frank for a very long time. He was going to be preaching in our association. And so we're going to meet for lunch at a restaurant and talk about some of that. And so we met uh, in Camden. That was halfway for me and for him. So we met at a restaurant in Camden. They took us over to the back side of the restaurant to seat us, and uh, waitress came by and took our drink order. And I said to her, I said, man, we're going to pray in just a little bit. Is there anything we can pray with you about? And she just started crying. She pulled up a chair, and she said, yes. Yeah. She said, just this morning, my husband asked me for a divorce. She said, I don't want a divorce. And I want you to pray that God will save my marriage. And we prayed for her. We led that lady to faith in Christ sitting right there. Found out where she lived, and I got her name and address. I knew a pastor in the area, and I called him. I said, here's this lady. Here's her information. Here's her phone number. Here's where she lived. And so that pastor followed up the very next day, went to her home, and led her husband to the Lord. Baptized both of them, and now they're active in that church. God restored that marriage. Because, simple thing, can we pray with you about something? Well, that morning we prayed for her, and a little while the manager of the restaurant came over there. She was bigger than me and Frank put together, and she, I thought, boy, she's going to read us a ride at. She, she pulled up and she, she said, could you pray with me about my teenage child? And we prayed for her, and then I bet there were five different people, employees of the restaurant, came and said, would you pray with us about this or that? Simple way to share your faith. The comeback. You'll be hearing a lot about the comeback. That's what he said about the old ways. See, find the old ways and go back to the old way where you missed it. Go back to the old way and find the right way to walk. I want to close tonight by asking you, those who are able to and you're willing to join me around the altar, we're going to have some prayer time. If you don't feel inclined to come to the altar, you can pray where you are. But I want to ask you to come and just pray with me about our nation. Pray with me about our churches, the state of where we are in churches in this country. Pray with us and with me about where we are in sharing our faith with unbelievers. Would you come and join me just in a time of prayer? Right here, just around the front, no music, no play. Just come and join me if you will and can. If you can't come and kneel, just stay seated.